We thank you, Father God, as we continue before your throne of grace, Father. We come here, Lord God, as one body in a spirit of unity and a bond of peace, Father, to praise and worship you, to glorify you, Father, to lift up the holy name of your holy Son, Jesus Christ, Lord God. And we invite the presence of your Holy Spirit, Lord God, to just infill this place, Lord God. Father, open the hearts of your people. Lose a mighty spirit of power and revelation, Lord God. Holy Spirit, just take over. Speak with your people, Lord God. Let your word be a seed, Lord God, that will be planted in our hearts. And till the soil of our hearts, Lord God, that the seed of your word, Lord God, may develop deep root in our hearts and bear much and lasting fruit, fruit that will last, Lord God, for your kingdom, Father. We thank you, Father God, as we give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory, and all the thanksgiving in Jesus' name mighty name and everybody say amen. amen thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord be in the spirit be in the spirit what does it mean to say be in the spirit Did anybody ever think about that how can you be more in the spirit everybody say everybody knows that we are not a body, nor are we a soul, but we are a spirit being with a soul and a body. So we are truly a spiritual being. That's our essence. We know that. We are not a soul. We are a spiritual being with a soul and a body. Is that right? Okay. We receive the, the spirit of God that is with us. So we are a spirit being. Bible also says, for our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual entities, powers and principalities in the spirit realm. Is that right? So, as spiritual beings, all right, let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I'll read to you one passage. It says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. He says the Holy Spirit is going to do it. He's going to make your whole spirit, your, your whole spirit, soul, and body to be blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that's now before his coming. Is that right? That's now. We are transformed from glory to glory. <clears throat> now if we are called to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh, what does it mean? The Holy Spirit is the one who is going to prepare us. What is our part? How, how can we become more spiritual? Did anybody ever think about that? How can we become more spiritual? Anybody? Any, anybody thought about that? Anybody thought about that? Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your heart on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of Christ. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God when Christ who is your life appears then you will also appear with him so even now the Lord is saying we are already seated with Christ in the heavenlies all right and it says that our citizenship is in heaven is that right our citizenship is in heaven so the Lord says, set your hearts on things above, 
set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. So what he's saying really, if you want to become more spiritual, we have to break into the spirit realm. Is that right? We have to break into the spirit realm. How do you break into the spirit realm more and more? He says, listen, where your heart, where your treasure is, that's where your heart also is. Think about things above. Meaning to say, we are citizens of, of heaven, but we do not we do not know what kind of life it is there because we are not experiencing it. Is that right? But we are being called to bring the kingdom down here when we have no idea how what it is. Why? Because it's the things of this world, and I don't mean sinful things. I don't mean necessarily sinful things. It is things of this world that consume us. We are more concerned with things of this world than we are with spiritual things. Now let's see if I, we get this right. Our battle is in the spiritual realm. We are supposed to be seated with Christ in the heavenlies, but we have our, mind, our, our hearts and minds set on the things of this world. We want the kingdom to break into this world and we are doing everything to break for it to break into this realm. But shouldn't we break into the spiritual realm for the power to be poured into us? Just now, we were praising and worshiping. We broke into the spirit realm. The Lord poured down a mighty thing on you. He poured down a mighty thing. He's setting you free. All right? The problem is, it's a moment, and then we go back into the physical and again, our minds are focused on the physical, our minds are focused on the problem, on problems, and we worry. See, the enemy has a way of taking us back when we should be think breaking through there and beginning to experience the life there. Because it is when we break through and we experience we are more in the spiritual than we are in the physical or in the, in, 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 in the physical or in the mental. When we break into the spiritual, then we are more empowered by the Lord. Listen, these new age people and the witches, they're smarter than most, most Christians. They're smarter than most Christians. They break into the spiritual realm through the use of witchcraft and demons so that they can get power and put hex on Christians. They know where the power lies. They move into the spiritual realm to get the power to put hex on their enemies. Imagine that. They, they, they move into the spiritual realm to, to, to tap into the power of Satan so that they can be empowered to put hexes on God's people. But God's people are more, 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 more concerned or are distracted by the things of this world and do not realize that if we break into the spiritual realm with the power of the Holy Spirit and are, we are consumed by, by things above, that we will break into that realm of power and be able to bring it here in our daily lives. Not on, not on special occasions like, like certain services, but as a way of life. Therefore, walk in the Spirit. But you see, many are just saying, well, I'm not doing something evil. No, you're, you may not be doing something evil, but you are consumed and your, your thoughts are on, on, on this world. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So how do, how do you... How do, you, how, do you, how do you break into that? You know, the, the, there is a passage here that, that very clearly uh, 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 describes to us how we can walk more in the Spirit. Can you go to Ephesians chapter, chapter 4? There are certain things that the Lord is telling us of how we can break into the Spirit. And now He's not talking only about individually, but He's talking as a body, as a 
chapter 4, verse 1, As a prisoner for the Lord, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. He completely humbled, be completely humble and gentle. So he's talking about how we can live our everyday lives in the power of the Spirit. Be completely humble, not self-centered, and gentle. I just said, I just finished putting a memo on 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 on, this, on on a group saying that the way we deal with one another should be one of love. And it says here, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. So he's telling us how we can break through. And then he follows it up and said, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace there's not the power you have no idea how great that power is i will read what he's saying uh, verse 9 verse 94 as i have often told you before and now say again even with tears many live as enemies of of the cross of christ their destiny is destruction and their god is their stomach and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Who, by the power that enables Him to bring everything under His control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like His glorious body. Everybody is waiting for the rapture. But even now, the Lord is already beginning to transform our bodies from glory to glory. Do you see what I'm saying? It will be a final thing when He comes, but now we are being transformed from glory to glory. You can see your bodies. You can see your bodies. You can feel it. And the Lord is saying, listen, you know, the, uh, uh, one, of the, one of my New Year's, I know the, the Lord was putting in my heart, He said, I, he said, he made me pray. I don't want to be mastered by anything. I don't want to be mastered by food. I don't want to be mastered by food. I don't want to be mastered by anything. I just want to be completely controlled by the Holy Spirit. I don't want to have any earthly love that will hold me from having the Lord as my first love. I don't want anything. Nothing. I want that spiritual life with the Lord, to be one with the Lord. All right? And therefore, look at this. Huh? Their mind. So their mind is on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. So, first, we have to control. Sister Rona was, was giving a, a, a testimony, a, a prophecy earlier that the minds of my people are corrupted. What does that mean to say? Are you thinking uh, just evil thoughts no you are worried about your everyday life and the, the lord very says very clear why are you worrying about your everyday life why are you worried you see there is a battle and the lord is allowing this battle because it's only in the bad during the battle that we become stronger and stronger and stronger it's like lifting weights you become stronger and stronger and stronger as we are able to overcome the physical by relying more on the spiritual i will repeat as we are able to overcome the physical, not by the power of our intellect, not by our human wisdom, but by the power of our faith in the Lord, by the power of the Spirit. In other words, it does not make any sense anymore. There is no way. There is no way we can solve it. No way. We can't beat those giants. We can't beat them. And it's only upon that realization and still know in our hearts that we have been called as overcomers of every situation in our life. Overcomers. We are not wavering. We do not, we do not sway with every time that the enemy show, rears up its ugly head, the giant rears up its ugly head, and we go, you know. No, we stand firm. We stand firm. The Red Sea is going to be parted for us. There's no question about it. Those Egyptians that are running after us, 
they're gonna get drowned. We really have to tap into that spirit realm because it is only by the power of the spirit that we will overcome. And that it is only through the power of the spirit that the kingdom is going to break through in us, through us. In us, through us. And take a look at what he says here. Huh? As he talks about, and, and then he says, okay, he says, the, their mind is on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await the Savior. And then look at chapter 4, what he says. Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord. That is how, how you should stand firm in the face of physical adversity, what the enemy is showing us in this world. Is that right? But take a look at the very next verse. He says, stand firm in the Lord. And then he goes, I plead with Yodia and I plead with Sintichi to agree with each other in the Lord. <laughs> Did you find it funny? He's talking about the kingdom. And he's talking about these two sisters who are working together in the kingdom in one spirit, but they are not agreeing with one another. Can you imagine? He's talking about our, the citizenship in heaven and standing firm in the Lord. And he switches to say, but I plead with these two sisters who are working with me together in the kingdom. I plead that they agree with one another in the spirit. Can you imagine that? What is he saying? It is the power said, where two or more, especially when you are called in one spirit, in one body, when you are called, when in the agreement of two or more, that the power of the kingdom comes. And that is what the enemy is trying to do. That's why if you notice, I'm getting all of you involved in everything that the Lord is doing so that we may stand as one body. Because I'll tell you the truth, Satan is so petrified, not of a big, big church, but of a small church who have been called to kingdom work and stand as one, helping one another, giving of each other to help one another. That is what is scared of. And that is why it is trying to cause that divisiveness among God's people. And if you go to, 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 to Ephesians chapter, but to Ephesians chapter 4, okay, so he's asking his two sisters to agree. He says, all right, and in and, and, and Ephesians chapter 4, he, sa he says in verse, verse 2, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. And then he goes, make every effort, not one effort, every effort to give the unity, not of the soul, not of the body, but the unity of the spirit. Hello? The unity of the spirit. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the band of peace, there is one body, one spirit. Just as you were called to one hope, you when you're called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. So it is the unity of the spirit that they're so afraid of. It is the unity of the spirit. Now, take a look, at, let's continue. It is he who gave some to be apostles some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works on service so that the body may be built up until we all reach, can you say it? Can you say it? In and in the of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Now listen to me. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful sk 
scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into Him who is the head, that is Christ. From Him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. As each part does its work. Each part has to do its work. Not in anger, not in resentment, but in love as working for the Lord. And that is why the enemy is going to lie to you that I'm being, I, I'm being persecuted, I, you know, I'm being enslaved, I'm being this, I'm being that, I, 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 you know. Your, your boss is going, to, is going to persecute you, all right, so that you can't even come to, to, to receive the power of the Lord. The enemy is going to do everything. Everything. He's going to cause you to delay your flesh from acting on what the Lord is telling you to do. He will cause these things so that the body is not coordinated. Some are moving fast and some are being carried by the, by, by, by the few that are moving ahead. There are a few who are moving so fast ahead. There are others that we have to drag and carry on our shoulders. Because they can't carry their own weight. My gosh! They can't carry their own weight. And you want to break into the kingdom? You can't even carry your own weight? I'm sorry, but the Lord is not, is not playing games anymore. Listen, we've waited a long time for this. We've waited a long time for the breakthrough into the Spirit, into the power of the Spirit. Not to be distracted by the things of the flesh, not to be distracted by the things of this world, but to live in the power of the Spirit. Everybody has to do their work and carry their weight and be mindful of, of the, what the others are doing so that you don't become too much of a burden with them, on them. Keep pace. Let us keep pace with the Spirit. The Spirit is dictating our move. Let's keep pace with the Spirit. Come on. Let's keep pace with the Spirit. So what, what, what is the Lord saying? Okay, he's saying, from, Sister Lorena was, was down for, what, two weeks? You know what the Lord was doing in her? He was taking her up to a much higher level in prophet, pro, pro, the prophetic ministry. Why? Because the Bible says, the church of the Lord is built on the foundation of apostles and prophets. The word of God. And she needed to be strengthened. You see, every, people prophesy. Okay? But there is a gift of prophecy and there is an office, an office of prophecy. She's being brought up. She's being brought up to be the prophetic foundation. And that is why it says here, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through a bond of peace. All right? That until we all reach unity in the, in, in the Son of God. Is that right? So let, me, let me go to another passage that the, Lord, that the Lord wants to share with you, okay? Again, how to live in the Spirit. Talks about the kingdom, okay? Chapter Colossians chapter 3 verse 12 therefore as God's chosen people holy and dearly loved clothe yourself with compassion kindness humility gentleness and patience bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another and then he says and over all these virtues put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity and then it says here verse 15 let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts now this is what the enemy wants to steal he wants to steal the peace of the Lord in your hearts he wants to steal the joy of the Lord because when there is no peace and there is no joy there is turmoil there is chaos there is struggle the enemy is able to come in I, I shared earlier I said you know in a working environment where it is 
where, it, where, 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 where verse 12 here goes like, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have. Forgive us the Lord forgave you. And over this, all these virtues put on love, which, which binds them together, then let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in, in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through, through, through him. Can you imagine that? Now, the Lord is saying, this. you want to walk in the Spirit? I'm telling you how to break into the Spirit. I'm telling you how to break into the Spirit realm. He says, L listen, listen to me. I want you to break into the spiritual realm. Speak to one another in love. The enemy will always try to make somebody irritable. And you don't even want to approach that person. No, really, because Sister Golden confessed to me. She asked forgiveness for that. She did yesterday. She, she wrote to me. You know, I'm so happy that she, 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 she humbled herself and she, she said that. You know, she said, the Lord is teaching me how to, how to speak in love and so forth and so on. And I go like, I'm very blessed to hear that. You see, many people think that, oh, I'm not like that. No, if you don't see it, man, because there is no humility. Because there is no humility. You see, you have... In a working environment, when God is telling us, build the seven mountains, the pace will be fast, but we will be doing it in the power of the Spirit. Now, listen to me. When we break into the spirit realm and we live our everyday lives more on the spiritual realm than on the physical. When I am telling you the, the, what, how the Lord is saying to live it. I've been reading the passages to you. As we live that on a daily basis, with the passages about the unity of the body, all right, in a band of peace, all right, helping one another, speaking to one another in love, okay, as we do that in the spirit realm, all right, the power of the Lord is going to manifest in our midst. I will repeat. The power of the Lord is going to manifest in our, in our midst. Why? Because there is nobody see you bro. There is nobody like oh, nobody like oh, I'm being persecuted here. I'm the one being, you know, there's nobody like that. I mean, you know, you will never get out of your boat. The storm is never going to be stilled in your life. Never! That storm is going to rage more and more until you get off the boat and walk on water. You ain't getting to the promised land by sitting in your comfort zone. No, I'm sorry, you're not. We all had to do it. I had to do it first before all of you. I had so much to give, so much to give up. Scary? Yes, of course it was scary. I want to get out of my comfort zone. In all areas, not only in business, not only in my livelihood, he made me go through everything. In other words, get out of there and walk on water. And as I do, as I did, I get the joy of the Lord. You see, because it's true that song, there is no earthly love that can hold me back. I love my parents. But when the Lord asked me that he didn't allow me to go home for their death, I was joyful because he made me feel that they were going home to him. And I was really joyful. I would miss them, but I was joyful for them. And only God can do that because the human nature cannot do that. The human nature, they... They 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 they, 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 you know, they, 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 they become miserable, you know, they, oh, you, you know, I, I'm, oh, my so and so died. Well, my, 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 my mother just, just, the Lord said, my mother is with the Lord, man. There's no earthly love that can hold me back. And in the, even the death of my loved ones, I had joy. And I had witnesses to saw it. 
I had joy. I can't do that. I can't do that. But it's so real to me that they're finally with the Lord. They're no longer struggling in their fleshly bodies. They're no longer struggling. They're with, with the Lord. I'm so joyful for them. That's not, that's not a natural feeling of a fallen nature. But it's the feeling of a one who has been born and is living in the spirit and knows that it is there where he has found his joy. It is there. It's more than the preaching. It's a lifestyle. There is nothing that can hold me back. Nothing. It's not a preaching. It's a lifestyle. It's some I can't convey this to you unless I am experiencing it, unless I've gone through it myself. You won't get to the kingdom by sitting, by doing more of what you're not doing, <laughs> what the Lord is asking you to do. No, you're not going through. You're not. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you right now. Your mind should be filled. You know, I mean, I mean, whoa. I mean, how did the Lord kept me here in, 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 in this place that's not even on the map? For 28, almost going on 28 years. And I didn't even travel abroad, but I don't miss it. You know why I don't miss it? Because I, I am filled with the Lord. Yes, I may have some struggles, but I'm filled with the Lord. It's a lifestyle. We got to break through into that spiritual. We not only have to break through during times of anointed praise and worship, but it's a daily walk. Because only then will the kingdom break through in, into our lives. And we are going to feel more of the spiritual realm than we will of our physical realm. And it, I'm not talking about sin. I'm talking about there is nothing that has a hold on my heart that I can give up. Nothing. Nothing. There's nothing that I would yearn for more than being with the Lord and doing what the Lord is asking me right now. Nothing. Nothing. Is that natural? Yes. For somebody that the Lord has brought to live in his kingdom. Yes, it is natural. It is unnatural for one who is a Christian but is living more in this world than he is in the spirit. And I'm not talking about sin I'm talking about just and that's why the Lord told me I want you to not be to let go of the food that yearning and so okay I started eating organic organic uh, carrots and organic broccoli but I'll tell you what man I'm eating like a whole bag of it because I'm enjoying it no, I'm not forcing myself. God developed a yearning for me. Sinon was giving me something. I said, like, no, 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 no. Because I'm really enjoying this. It's a better steak, man. <laughs> no, I mean, how can I develop an appetite? I mean, a yearning for organic carrots and organic broccoli. I mean, hello. But I prayed to God. I said, Lord, I don't want to be mastered by anything. I want to be completely under your control of the Holy Spirit in every area of my life. Everything, my mind, my body, whom I thank the Lord for, for my caribization, my good looks. <laughs> that can go on, on TV again. <laughs> and in my health. Health is well. You know, I read, I read what, what, what uh, Stephen Jobs wrote when he was in, in bed in the hospital. He said, you know what, don't commit, basically I'm, I'm paraphrasing, don't commit the same mistake I did. I've devoted my entire life to making money. And now I'm here and I'm suffering. And I suddenly realize that I wasted a lot of my time. 
I should have spent my time. And he doesn't know the Lord. Okay, maybe he receives the Lord, but he doesn't know the Lord. He goes like, you know, I should have spent my time more loving and thinking of others. I posted it. I posted it. His last talk when he was in, 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 in sick in bed, he says, my gosh, I wasted my life. He goes, I wasted my life. You know. And he's talking only in the physical. He hasn't even tasted the presence of the of the Lord and his kingdom. He hasn't even tasted that. He hasn't even, but here's Stephen Jobs on his deathbed and he's, he's, he's telling the people what happened to his life and how it became useless. I just became so focused on making money, he said. Oh, we, 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 you know, that, that, that's so scary. That's so scary. It's what the Lord is telling us exactly, okay? Whatever you do, do it in, in, in word and deed. Do it all in the name of the Lord. And really, everybody, take a look at your heart. And it's between you and the Lord. Ask, when I wake up in the morning, what is the first thing that comes into my mind? Throughout the day, what is it that comes into my mind? Where do I long to be? <laughs> because where I long to be is where my heart is. Okay, Where do I long to be? Where do I long to be? I remember when, when, when I was a little boy, I didn't know the Lord, I was going to church. You know, I go to church. I hated going to church, man. I had Sundays. I go like, well, I would be asked to dress up in white pants, okay? I go like, man, just starchy white pants, man. Like, man, this is the most uncomfortable thing in the world. And I have to go, I have to go to, to mass? I mean, I'd like to play. This is weekend. It's playtime. Hey, I would be in church because it was like a, they call it a holy day of obligation. Right? Holy day of obligation. So it's an obligation. It's not a joy. So I, it was really an obligation. So that was the concept I had. I'm really getting obliged here. All the time I would be in church, I would think of where I would want to be. I, I can't wait to get out of church and go and play. Because that's where my heart was. I wanted to play. So I didn't want to be in church. You know, that's so, so strange that from a guy who who did not want to go to church and after, after I graduated from, 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 from college for over 20 years, I did not go to church. Can you imagine that from somebody like that to man spending my whole life now full time, 100% with the Lord and enjoying every minute of it. Amen. I mean, so where was my, my treasure at the time? It was in playing. I couldn't wait to get out of the church. I couldn't wait. I, I want to go out and I want to play basketball with my friends. You know? Well, in high school, I couldn't wait and go out and do other things. <laughs> but, but my heart was somewhere else. Everyone has to ask himself or herself this. Where would I rather be really? I mean, do I feel like Pastor Bob felt when he was a kid? I mean, how come now I can, I'm so joyful and I thank God that he called me away from the world. I mean, yes, we will work in the world, but it's not part of us. We are working in the world to establish his kingdom. I'm not even looking at my own, what, how much I'm going to make or that. No, the Lord's going to take care of that. I am more concerned with building his kingdom, what he's asking me to do. And what he's asking us to do. So I'm more concerned with that. That's what I'm living for. If not for that, if the Lord did not have a purpose like that in my life, I told the Lord I'd much rather be with him if I had no more purpose. If my purpose had been fulfilled, I'd, I'd much rather be with him. But the Lord said, no, it's just beginning. You're, you are going to lead the people to build my kingdom, my, my seven mountains. Am I like, I can, I can, I, okay, Lord, let's go. Let's go, man. So, guys, please, your hearts, your minds, hold every thought captive. 
don't allow oh you know I, I'd like to do this I'd like to set your mind on things above Amen. set your heart on things above for you the Lord wants to break his kingdom into your mind your heart your body and your everyday life it's only when it breaks through into your mind your heart and your body and your everyday life that you will be able to extend it and break it through into every area he commands you to go into Amen. until such time you can go anywhere you want and it, it ain't breaking through <laughs> you, you you can go anywhere you want and you are going in the power of your flesh let it be when you go you feel the presence and the power of the lord and if i must if i must i, I will end here if i must I, if i may boast i will boast in the lord and i will make one boast i remember uh, uh, about a week a week ago I, I it was my relaxation day it was a sunday and i was watching movies there in my you know uh, in, in 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 the car and i was watching it and Sister Lorena calls me up and says, oh my gosh, you know what, I'm getting attacked. She goes, she's beginning to shake and all that. And I said, okay, I said I'll be there. It was about 4, 4.30 in the morning. And I go like, okay, I'll be there. I, okay, I come down. I go, Lord, what is it? What is what's happening to Sister Lorena? What do you want me to tell her? What do you want me to pray over? She goes, nothing. She says, nothing. I said, what do you mean? Whatever do you mean? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord says, just enter the room and bring my presence in power. Mm. And I'll say anything. Just enter the room and bring my presence in power. So she goes, oh, oh, and I enter the room and she goes, oh, yeah, oh, so, you know, she's going like that. And then I sit down and I smile and I said, she said, oh, you know what? I said, so I said, so how do you feel now? That's what I said. And she stops. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> And I all glory to God. If I must boast, I will boast in the Lord. Because the power of His kingdom, I didn't even have to speak. He, he just, is that right, Sister Lawrence? He, she started, we started laughing. But she said, she went to me. said, so, I, because I knew already, because I, I sat down and I said, so where is it now? Where is that feeling now? And she goes, and she's checking herself. It's gone. She goes, and I started laughing. And she started laughing. And I said, that's the power of God. Amen. I didn't even say anything. But the kingdom broke through. Because we are the carriers of the kingdom. Amen. But for us to carry the kingdom, it must break through in our lives first. Amen. Or you can try to be a witness in the flesh. And nothing's going to happen. You're going to be... No, something's going to happen. People are going to get turned off. <laughs> People are going to get turned off. Yeah. You don't believe you know, as, as President Sam says, as President Sam says, true. <laughs> true. <laughs> it's true. Okay. You're going to be in the power of the flesh, man. There's no power there. Again, I've given you the passages of how to break through into the spiritual realm. And how, as one body, we can move forward together enjoy and let the spiritual atmosphere in which we work be permeated by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the kingdom of the Lord and I'll tell you what as we work in such a spiritual environment miracles are going to break through just like what happened the Lord said just go there and bring my presence and so and that's it and I went there and I sat down because the Lord told me. I said, so, where is it now? It's gone. <laughs> Why? Because the power of the kingdom broken, has broken into our lives. And wherever we go, we are bringing the power of the kingdom. And when we work as a body in such an environment, as a body in such an environment, Signs and wonders are going to follow in our midst. True! <laughs> As President Trump would say, true! Okay. okay. And.
Remember Nehemiah. Whenever they worked as one body, they worked as one body. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you.